Spring ushers in new beginnings and sets the stage for exciting adventures. It is a welcomed time of year as nature awakens from its winter slumber. In celebration of the season, we cross state lines into the vibrant landscapes and rugged mountain terrain found in Colorado. Armed with anticipation, we join our friends from Tetra Hearing, Dr. Bill and Lisa Dickinson, where the thrill of spot and stalk mountain turkey hunting awaits us. But that's not all. Amidst the breathtaking views of the Bighorn Mountain Range and majestic rolling plains, as the season of renewal is among us, my dream of owning property in Wyoming comes to life. There's so much potential for those who dare to dream. So buckle up and prepare for the highs and the lows of the hunt and the promise of new beginnings. Obviously, you guys know I'm not a city girl. Yogi and I live in the city. This is our home, and Yogi is not home currently, so I'm holding down the fort. This house was built in 1906, and we're currently living here, but as you guys know, I need a gun range, need space, have mules, horses, dogs. So we're gonna go look at some property today. everybody. This beautiful space could be Yogi and I's future home and uh, as luck would have it I am wife of the year because I put an offer on this place without my husband seeing it. Crossing fingers that this works out. We're gonna meet the neighbor here in a minute um, because he's doing some development to the east and I just have to try to you know dot my I's, cross my T's, make sure everything's gonna work for this to not only be a great spot for us to have our future home but a gun range and a place for the mules and um, you know trying to live out that full Wyoming, Wyoming dream right here in Sheridan. Navigating the intricacies of purchasing such a unique property, one that not only accommodates my future construction goals with having access to power and water, a home for my mules, and of course, an area to safely shoot, can be extremely challenging. Safety is the foremost priority in acquiring a property that provides not only the freedom to shoot, but also the ability to practice with my firearms safely and securely. And this meeting with the neighbor has left me with some major concerns. Hello, Hello. Hello husband. How are you? I'm okay. Um, kind of a hang up with the property. I just don't think we, even though there's a backstop, the optic of safety just isn't there. And I am just really nervous about it. No, it doesn't sound like it's something that would work for what you want to do. No. No. All right, that settles it. I will, um, I'll let Jeannie know and um, we'll keep property shopping. We'll find one. Yeah. Yeah. We have been looking at this 255 acre parcel um, for like 15 or 16 months and I just, we had it in contract last summer 
and when the sale failed on my house in Oregon, we withdrew our offer. I didn't come back to this property and kind of really consider it just because of the price. And I was really turned off by the price because it's just more than I want to spend. But walking away from this last piece of property, my husband just kind of puts this like ever so slight bug in my ear like, you know, what about that piece off Laura Prairie Dog Road that we looked at last summer? Maybe we should revisit that. I'm a numbers girl right now, so I sat down and I crunched the numbers and compared it, you know, acre per acre, feature for feature, to the property that I just walked away from. And it's actually a better deal. So I'm gonna come out here with Jeannie and we're gonna look at it and um, it looks like Yogi and I both just absolutely love this property and um, would love to call it home. It's a lot quieter than the last place we looked at and I like that there's no people. As far as the eye can see, so I was crunching numbers and you know, last summer when we had this in contract, there was an option to buy the 175 here with, with a first right of refusal or an, I guess it'd be an option to purchase this 80 acres to the right here. Do you think they'd still do that? You know, all we can do is ask, but my thought is, is that they will. Okay. Now this place has ponderosa pines and terrain and two reservoirs and there's just a lot more here. Plus it adjoins a small chunk of BLM that I can actually access with the mules for additional riding. And so, all right, well, let's go and, um, Let's get this figured out and write it up. Pursue the Wild is brought to you by Ruger and Marlin Firearms. This segment is brought to you by Night Force Optics. Rugged, reliable, repeatable. And on X Hunt, know where you stand. We put the pedal down and hit the road for a long-awaited adventure turkey hunting in the picturesque landscapes of Colorado. As we all know, hearing a turkey gobble and drum its feathers is one of the most exciting aspects of the hunt. And this hunt is very special as I prepare to experience my first hunt equipped with a pair of Tetra Custom Shields. Not only will I be able to hunt with my hearing protected from potential loss, but I will also be hunting with the enhanced ability to hear the hunt that Tetra is famous for. The number one predictor of Alzheimer's and dementia and short-term memory loss is your hearing status between 35 and 55. Oh gosh, my dad's so doomed. Oh, this right? is terrible news. We do have a, we have a full line of a universal fit, which is really what the company was built around. All the turkey vocalizations are the ones that we're giving the most sound to, but yet we always add in speech frequencies so that you can always hear. We digitize gobbles, clucks, yelps, kiki, fly down, spitting and drumming. Okay, go to the next program. Okay. So push the button. I right. just went to range mode. And this should sound, this should be the most comfortable for like just speech and hanging out. Yeah. So hearing speech on a range, the most important thing is to protect the ear. The second most important thing is to be able to hear and communicate. We got a couple of birds right over here gobbling. We're gonna go park at the well pad down here and make a big loop. Well, we'll split up. Two people will go up, make a big loop and try and get above them and then two people will stay down low just in case we push them down. I could hear all the Tweety Birds. Isn't it wild? Like, 
even now, and I could hear those turkeys gobble so good. It's unbelievable what you can hear. Yes. With these in. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, they literally listen to the woods wake up. Yeah. He's out here. Go around here and see if we can't get him to come back. Lisa and like a little bit more traditional turkey setup. We'll we use some of these parks to our advantage. Set a Jake and a hen or two and kind of try to get a Tom to come in strutting. As Lisa and I are getting handed some hard knocks, Dr. Bill is getting straight up Western with his approach, running after gobbles on the Ponderosa pine covered mountainside. This hunt is reminiscent of the wild, wild west, which is the perfect experience for a first time Western turkey hunter from Music City itself, Nashville, Tennessee. And trust me, Dr. Bill is not going to let a Colorado gobbler outmaneuver him. He's getting out ahead. He's down. I think the scratching helped. I just pretended like I was scratching all the way up. Yeah. And by the time when I weaseled my way up the next pine tree, looked around one side, no bird. Looked around the other side, red head. I came back, I looked at Yogi, and I'm like... <laughs> How far was it? Uh, 12 yards, really? 14 yards. Right there. From the gobble to the stalk and execution of strategy, Dr. Bill straight up nails it. The hunt presses on, with Dr. Bill and Lisa having departed for home. This time, it's my turn, and the woods are teeming with turkeys. With a flock of jakes in front of me, I patiently bide my time, yet a mature gobbler remains elusive. Like many Western turkey hunts, success hinges on covering ground and locating a cooperative gobbler. We cover miles of mountain terrain, enjoying beautiful scenery along the way. When everything seems perfect, there are times when it just doesn't pan out as we had hoped. Well, that's a first for me, so. Okay. That sucks so bad. That 
was almost perfect on our first set this morning that Tom came in. He was right behind some trees strutting. And there's the one spot I didn't have a clear shot. <sighs> what a lame ending. <laughs> so, so sucky. Oh, yeah. Part tree, part turkey. Not good. Turkeys, I hate you. <laughs> With close calls and shots fired, my Colorado turkey tag remains unnotched. We bid our farewell to our friends and load up the truck as we are out of time. And this is where we always wish for just one more day. Thankfully, back home in Wyoming, the turkey season is still open, which means the hunt for a gobbler is not over. Pursue the Wild is brought to you by Ruger and Marlin Firearms. This segment is brought to you by Safari Club International, first for hunters. Tinks, America's number one buck lure. And Dead Down Wind, real science, real results. We have been really struggling to find turkeys on public land, and I'm very fortunate. My friends Jeff and Christina Tift here in Wyoming have a little farm, and they happen to have a tom turkey on the farm right now. And so Yogi and I have been watching these things at night, and they have been coming down this valley heading to their roost tree. So we set up, we've been trying to call in this turkey. We've done two different attempts, and you know, we'll see the turkey, he'll be with hens, or he'll just not talk and not come in and so he's just been really tough to hunt we're at the end of may it's just been super frustrating so what we're gonna do is we are going to try to kind of intercept where the turkeys have been walking through on their way to roost we're gonna leave the decoys behind i want to just really old school hunt try to get in front of this tom turkey try to be in the right area the right place at the right time and hopefully we can get an opportunity at him. So we're gonna stay super light and mobile, as light, light and mobile as I can get with a camera. <laughs> um, but that's, that's kind of how we're gonna hunt him. We're really excited, it's gonna be a lot of fun. set up because she's putting. There's a good chance that Tom's with her. I just heard him gobble so that Tom is with these heads. I don't want to push in too hard because I don't want him to see us. Let's go set up right over here.
First resident Wyoming turkey, and it is a beautiful Miriam's turkey. Um, actually, it's only my second ever Miriam's turkey. I got a hybrid in Oregon one time, um, kind of a Rio Miriam's hybrid. I have never taken a turkey this late in the season. There's literally two days left of turkey season. We are at the end of May. One of the most beautiful places in the world. It just does not get any better than this. Thank you for watching this episode of Pursue the Wild. Jump behind the scenes with us for our podcast, Wild and Uncut, or tune into our digital lifestyle show, Our Wild Life. You can stream everything on my website, pursuethewild.com, and be sure to follow me on social media, at Christy Titus.